Dark Moon sees the player once again assuming the role of Mario's brother Luigi as he undertakes yet another ghostly adventure. In comparison to the original, its sequel takes a far more humorous and light-hearted approach. This translates nicely to the gameplay, which is incredibly easy and fun to get to grips with. The Poltergeist vacuum has seen a few upgrades, such as now possessing a power gauge, which can unleash a boost of energy to help catch the even trickiest of ghosts. To top this off, the vacuum couples is the main way in which to solve the puzzles littered throughout the experience that will see you using it to perform a magnitude of tasks. There's also a ton of content to get stuck into, with five mansions making up the adventure that all task the player with several objectives to complete, such as retrieving items, defeating enemies, or accessing specific areas. But one of the best aspects of the experience has to be the multiplayer mode known as Scarescraper, which sees up to four players competing against each other to achieve predefined goals within a set time limit. It manages to add some serious replayability to the game, which would make it a worthy addition to your collection. Bravely Default takes place in a world known as Luxendark, which is kept in balance by four crystals that are each worshipped and protected by the surrounding populace. After one of these crystals is consumed by a mysterious darkness, its protectors undertake a journey to restore it and ultimately save the world from the encroaching evil. The journey comes to life thanks to the incredible art style that conveys each location you encounter along the way with intricate detail and character. Each town is packed with NPCs and shops that provide the player with items or magic as well as weapons and armor to even odds against the huge variety of enemies in the game. But the battling system has to be one of the best aspects of the experience. It combines many factors such as the well thought out job system and with over 24 separate jobs available, there is plenty to try out, from standard attacks to healing, summoning monsters, all the way to job specific moves. There truly is an insane amount on offer here. Planet Robobot sticks to what was established in the previous 3DS title, Triple Deluxe, and because of this, many similarities between the two games can be drawn. But the main change has to be the inclusion of Kirby's new Robobot armor that fills in for the hypernova ability that was in Triple Deluxe. The gameplay remains largely untouched, making it a simple platforming affair. Like most games in the series, you are capable of inhaling enemies and spitting them out to inflict damage, or swallowing them to absorb their abilities. And this translates to the robot suit nicely as well, with a scanning function that essentially serves as same purpose, allowing you to transform into several different versions of the suit, one being a jet mode that turns the game world into a side-scrolling shooter, and another being real mode, which transforms the game into a 2D racer. The inclusion of the new mech suit really comes into its own, with the incredible amount of puzzles that utilise each of the suit's functions, and quite honestly offers up some of the finest moments of the game. The journey is comprised of six worlds that consist of about eight to nine stages each. It's a pretty sizable adventure that will last you a good amount of time, and it shares many similarities with the previous Yoshi games in the series. You can run and jump as well as absorb enemies and spit them out to form yarn balls. The platforming is simple to be honest and will not really provide that much of a challenge for most seasoned players, but that in no way detracts from what the overall experience gets right. A huge emphasis is put on amiibo this time around, which help you unlock extra designs for Yoshi, as well as provide a way to help find hidden treasures in each stage. Visually, Poochie and Yoshi's Woolly World looks fantastic. Nintendo should really be commended for getting this up and running on the handheld machine, and if you're lucky enough to have a new 3DS in your hands, you can look forward to an enhanced experience due to the bump in frame rate from 30 to 60 frames per second. Starting life out on the GameCube, Animal Crossing has gone on to become one of the most fondly loved franchises in Nintendo's catalogue. New Leaf is the fourth instalment in the series, and brought with it many new features that help it stand out from its prior entries. Once again, the player takes the role of a town mayor, and is tasked with managing a village, all the while enjoying the day-to-day -day life of the inhabitants of the area, such as fishing, shopping around town, growing different types of plants and trees, the list goes on and on. It has a real emphasis on freedom, whereas most games these days hold you by the hand, or force you into a specific specific linear goal, New Leaf instead gives you a sense of unparalleled freedom. It's ultimately whatever you make of it. Doesn't matter if you want to design cute clothes for yourself and friends, or just gather money and develop your town. The ball is in your court. Mario Kart 7 brought Nintendo's particular brand of go-karting madness to the system in style. Boasting a generous cast of characters as well as tracks and unlockables made this one of the finest outings in the series up until that point. Visually, it's a real stunner considering this is all running on handheld hardware at 60 frames per second. It is a testament to the talent of the team behind it. A 3D option is also available during play, which makes the on-screen action come to life, but in all honesty, we found it a much more comfortable experience with it on. But it's nice to see it included nonetheless. Gameplay-wise, the stage 
stays true to the series roots and doesn't really do that much to shake up the formula, apart from the inclusion of underwater and gliding sections that seamlessly blend into each race, as well as a greater sense of customization afforded to the player. Several modes comprise the experience, with the standard Grand Prix and Time Trial modes available, as well as balloon battles and coin runs that mix up the action and provide something fresh apart from just racing opponents. But where Mario Kart 7 really comes into its own is with its multiplayer options. Both local and online are available, and quite honestly offers up some of the best action on the system. Super Smash Bros for the 3DS is the first iteration of the series to appear on handheld consoles. It brings with it everything that made its home console counterpart so fun and chucks in a few new features to boot that help refine the experience. There's over 50 characters that fill the roster both from Nintendo's past and present as well as some familiar faces many players will recognise from the gaming landscape as a whole. Now the objective of the game is to ultimately defeat your opponent in battle, but instead of possessing a traditional health bar, the aim is to knock your opponent off the stage by taking advantage of each character unique abilities and moves. The controls are responsive and facilitate the action well, but I'd be lying if I said the 3DS version doesn't suffer due to its limitations. The size of the machine can often become awkward, but never to the point of making it a chore to play. And there is a lot to do, from the standard classic mode to a new inclusion known as Smash Run, which is exclusive to this version of the game. It sees you choosing a fighter and being dropped into a huge map filled to the brim with enemies to overcome, items and secrets to find, as well as special challenges to complete, with a whole host of unlockable content content and the ability to take the fight online as well, everything adds up to make this one of the system's most essential games. Originally released for the Nintendo Wii U in 2015, Super Mario Maker offers what many Nintendo fans have been dreaming of, the chance to design and play your very own Mario levels. As you can expect, that was a huge success, prompting Nintendo to bring the experience to the handheld to ultimately reach more players. But how well does it hold up to the home console counterpart? Well, it manages to bring with it mostly everything that made the Wii version stand out. Creating levels have never been easier, with the bottom screen presenting all of the building tools and the top showing a real-time view of your creation and being able to just jump straight into it and test out a creation still never gets old. Now one difference between versions, however, is the Super Mario Challenge that sees the player completing courses with specific objectives in mind, such as collecting coins, a certain amount of 1-ups or defeating specific enemies. It manages to keep everything fresh and deals out the game's creative content at a nicely even pace, allowing you to get even more bizarre with your own creations. A sequel to the classic adventure A Link to the Past on the Super Nintendo, players once again take up the role of Link, who is tasked with saving the kingdom of Hyrule from an evil entity known as Yuga, an evil sorcerer intent on resurrecting Ganon. The journey is set over two worlds, the first being Hyrule and Lowrule being the second. They both completely differ in style and tone, but retain a similar layout to each other. A whole host of lovable characters occupy both realms and help the player along the way in the form of assistance and side quests that help bring both worlds to life. Gameplay by everything manages to stay true to the top-down Zelda games of old, navigating Link around the environment feels fluid and responsive, armed with a trusty sword and shield as well as a whole host of weapons to acquire along the way that make an appearance from the series past, such as the bow and bombs, will make long-time fans happy as well as newcomers alike. But the real hook of A Link Between Worlds is the ability to turn into a painting, which is acquired upon completing the first dungeon. This grants the player the ability to project themselves onto certain walls that is utilised throughout the experience. You'll see yourself use in it to cross gaps, avoiding traps, dodging enemies and solving puzzles scattered throughout each world. It never manages to feel forced or tedious, and is a welcome addition to the usual formula that makes up a Zelda game. Pokemon Sun and Moon introduced us to the vibrant region of Alola. This allowed it to, in terms of the narrative, deviate from the regular story beats of the series and instead presented a journey that managed to feel like a real evolution of the Pokemon formula. Although the gameplay remains intact, there is a huge number of changes to the overall setup that complement the new adventure, one of the most notable being how the journey is now split up into separate islands, each requiring the player to complete a set of trials in order to advance. This aspect fills in for the gyms that occupied the towns of other regions in the franchise, and instead presents the player with a huge variety of tasks, instead of the standard way of advancing by collecting gym badges that fans have become so accustomed to. Another new addition to the franchise was the introduction of the Z-move that requires your Pokemon to be holding a crystal in order to perform. When combined with a move of the same type, a devastating version of it can be unleashed and results in a spectacular show that dominates the on-screen action. Just over 80 new Pokemon species were introduced with Sun and Moon, as well as Alolan versions of previous generation Pokemon, which was a 
nice little touch that is bound to put a smile on everyone's face. With several Pokemon games on the system, there is a lot of choice when it comes to deciding what to get. If you're looking for a fresh take on the franchise, pick up Sun and Moon, or even Ultra Sun and Moon which came out not so long ago, but if you're looking for a more traditional Pokemon experience, the likes of X and Y, as well as the remakes of the Game Boy Advance titles, would do more to scratch that itch. 